Turn run average with 17 punch outs through 12 innings pitch. He has great stuff, Lynn. We might even see a, a 96 or 97 from Thatcher Hurd. He has that ability in him. He just has to command the breaking ball in the strike zone. And if he does, he'll have a very good day. Teams have hit him fairly frequently, 18 base hits in those 12 innings. And uh, certainly he's capable of better than that. The outfield plays the leadoff batter to the right side. We are underway and Hurd blazes one in the mid 90s for a strike 94 with the first one you know they he they had a little emphasis this last time out on getting a little bit on the side of the baseball a little more with his fingers uh, as opposed to so much straight over the top trying to get a little bit of movement out of that fastball it's a constant tinkering process isn't it when yeah. you're a pitcher just a an eighth of an inch can make a big difference it's just like are pro golfers you know pro golfers yeah. are always tweak tweaking their swing changing their swing well pitchers are always you know messing with the baseball messing with finger pressure uh, location of the fingers on the ball as well to try to get a little bit of different run or movement sometimes you get a surprise don't you you aren't planning it and it happens Hendrickson four for seven or oh, I beg your pardon he is 0 for 4 in the series. This is the second game in which he's played. Hitting 282 on the year. Four driven in and one home run. Xavier wearing the baby blues. I like, I like the, uh, the all blue look. There and that is. is a call third strike. It got a piece of the inside corner. And that's the key that Thatcher heard. We know the time we've seen this lineup for LSU today. Well, Jay Johnson said before the game when I was talking with him down the field that the, he will continue to tinker and mess with the lineup for a while. They're nowhere near having a set rotation. And he's got so many options. He's still looking for some guys to step up and just put take a stranglehold on their position. And in the meantime, He's going to play the lefty-righty game. He's going to try different folks. And, uh, you know, outside of really, I think, the three catcher spots, Jones and White, Braswell and Milam, I think outfield is really where you're going to see a lot of different people play in, in, in many different positions as well. McCormick at the plate out of Chicago, and he takes a strike. The right hand that came up from Jason Bradley. First base umpire is Michael Durantes. Jeff Head is working second base, and Jeremy Dupree is at third. The 2 1 pitch lined to the second baseman, and Milam was out in short right field. That's a ball, had Milam not been that deep, that probably would have been over his head on the dirt. And uh, he caught that ball in shallow right field. He was positioned perfectly. Let's look at the weather. It's sunny. The wind is out of the north at eight miles an hour, and you can see the uh, flags there showing the effects of the wind. 67 degrees right now, no chance of rain. And the sky is the color of a robin's egg today. Yeah, the wind is definitely going to knock down some balls uh, to left field at the moment and will help help the, the balls go headed out to right field. And put a star on uh, whoever does the positioning defensively for LSU. They earned their meal money today. They had Milam literally did not have to move. He was played perfectly uh, on that last line drive. By the way, please assure me, take a look at your updated watch and tell me what time it is. I mean, it says 12.06. Okay. I mean, you had to turn your it's, dial ahead. So it's noon plus six. Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's 12.06. Okay. I'm going to call it noon plus six. You don't have to. I mean, with your iPhones and uh, Apple Watches, you don't have to do anything. Uh, it just uh, does uh, it for uh, you. Uh, my my uh, car did not update. I've got to do that manually. Of course, when it was built, there was no such thing as daylight saving time. That's into the belly of the first baseman, Jones, and he makes the play. Christian schedule. He said he and uh, Billy O'Connor, the head coach of uh, of Xavier, actually were scheduled to play over in Arizona when he was at the University of Arizona, and they got rained out in a game down there, which is rare, right? Yeah. A rain yeah. out in Tucson. I didn't even know that existed. But um, so they've been talking about getting back together to play and.
Xavier next season in 2025 will open its season on the road at Tulane in a three-game series, and then they're going to come to Baton Rouge and play LSU in a midweek game. So we'll see them again next year. Milam, who has proven to be a good two-strike hitter over the course of his young career, is from Las Cruces, New Mexico. He's hitting 408. He's got 20 base hits in this only his 14th start and that's the most base hits of any tiger that's a close pitch he lets it slide by upstairs two and two milam slices this one out of play on the left side that's an early souvenir. Well, you know how uh, I mentioned uh, earlier how Jay Johnson's still tinkering with his lineup. You see what he, Milam's done the last four games, eight for 16. This is one guy he doesn't have to tinker with. You know, this is what Jay Johnson's looking for. He's looking for some of those outfielders to step up like Milam has and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to take this job. Milam chops it up the middle. This is going to be a tough play for Cushing. Out on a very very close play at first base and well done by Jared Cushing getting that ball and firing it from an off balance position. Um. Right, place your friendly bets at home right now. Safe. You can see the foot's on the bag. Ball's not in the glove. So uh, that was a quick challenge to Jay Johnson immediately challenged it even before Milam had walked back to the bag and the monster refused to leave the bag <laughs> that's his nickname Milam the monster yeah he listed at 5 8 I'd like to get the tape measure out I've, I've he looks like Tyler Hanover remember Tyler Hanover who was a good player on the nine national championship team and had a great career uh, I, he's kind of got that similar size I don't think Tyler was about five six maybe I don't think this is going to take particularly long, but we will wait and let the officials look at it from every angle possible. And here we go. After review, the call on the field will be reversed. Runner is safe. LSU retains their challenge. So Milam collects his 21st hit of the season. As he chopped it up the middle, Cushing made a heck of a play, but Milam beat the throw by a fraction, and he's aboard on the infield hit. Here's Travinsky. We don't often see him hitting second, do we, Ronnie? No, it's definitely uh, He picks up the first pitch. Yep, and that's going to hook out a play. So, you know, the, the, the two-hole position in Major League Baseball and college baseball has really changed over the last four or five years and it used to be that you, you oftentimes wanted to have a lefty a bunner somebody like that a left-hander that could get that speedy lead off to help steal a bag but now they they figured out the analytics Lynn and that's a fancy term for the data that somebody like Mark Case your statistician would figure out not you but it, that the guy who hits second will oftentimes return to bat for his fifth time in the ninth inning and potentially with the game on the line or whatever and so therefore they want their hottest hitter they want their best and hottest hitter and right now Travinsky's their best and hottest hitter at the moment for LSU we've seen Tommy White in that yep. second spot this year gone are the days of the second spot being about speed or bunning or any of that stuff. contact yeah it's about really the guy who is uh, who's on fire and, and your best hitter so for a pretty decent average and he's called out. That one ripped the outside corner. Travinsky called out on a good pitch by Boyle. Take a look, see if this one's off the plate a little bit. Catcher reaches over there. That's a tough one because the catcher was set up sort of inside and the, and the pitcher missed over the outside corner. So it looked worse than it was on TV because you see the catcher reach all the way across. But home plate umpire said it did catch the corner. So this brings on Brady Neal.
Neal is hitting 333. This is his 11th start. He's 12 for 36. Half of those hits have been doubles, and three more have been home runs. And he committed on the swing. This young man who is versatile defensively brings three gloves to the ballpark every day from Tallahassee, Florida. Of course, he had the season ending back injury very early last year, but he's much, much, much healthier this year. Ronnie, I heard him talking before the season, and he was very appreciative of the LSU medical staff and training staff for crafting a very specific series of exercises and stretches and, and routines to go through specifically for his back problem. It, it's really a one-on-one a -on -one type uh, rehabilitation, and he has responded to it. Yeah, he has, and I tell you, you know, the difference uh, for Brady Neal physically from last year to this year, I mean, now he looks like a grown man. If you've stood next to him, as I did in Houston, got a chance to, you know, I mean, he is all muscle. He's much matured physically, and, uh, you know, credit him with a lot of that hard work, but also the LSU staff for helping him. Credit Boyle for striking out two Tigers after the infield hit by Milam, and this brings on Tommy White. White is batting 311 with two home runs, 12 driven in. He's had a couple of doubles this year. Milam bluffs from first base. White nubs it off the cap of the bat foul. That was the cutter, the 87 mile an hour cutter, and White hit it on the end of the bat. That was probably the best pitch of the day that he has thrown so far. That was a big league cutter. Here's a 1-1. That's high. White in the series is one for eight. And Boyle from the stretch turns and throws to first base instead. LSU, like last year, does not run a lot, but Milam is the most productive stolen base fellow on the team. He's four for four. Moderate lead, stretches it a little bit, not going. That sweeper is high, and it's now a hitter's count at three and one. That was a really good take by Tommy White, who is a free swinger extraordinaire. That was a very close pitch, two and one, he laid off of, and now he's in a hitter's count. Josh Pearson is next. Milam takes a moderate lead. He is not going, and White is hit by a pitch. The Tigers continue to attract a lot of baseballs, don't they? 93 mile an hour fastball right on the left arm. That's not going to feel good in this cool Sunday. Right on the, just above the elbow, below the bicep. That's the fourth Tiger in this series that's been plunked. And the second time that White has been hit. And it brings on Pearson. Pearson is one of those guys who is contending for those outfield spots that you uh, suggested earlier. Yeah, you know, Josh, of course, who started the season, a lot of talk about him playing second base, had a number of starts over there at second base. but. Uh, his natural position is the outfield, and with Milam kind of stepping up and grabbing that spot. Oh, he's out. That's the second time in two days we've seen an LSU runner over, you know, slide past the bag. Yesterday, Kling able to make it back in time, but Milam today, not, not so lucky. So that'll be an out stealing as Milam slipped past the not at capacity, but uh, certainly a lot of folks here enjoying 
this pleasant afternoon it's LSU and, and Xavier Nick Boyle on the mound for Xavier Thatcher heard after a one two three inning returns here in the second he'll face Walshman Schultz and Dupre. Walshman is making his third start in the series. He's one for seven this weekend. He's out of Centennial, Colorado. And a liner to left. That's down for a base hit. And that's the initial base runner for the Musketeers. I'll tell you what, if you could draw up what an outfielder looks like in a baseball uniform, it'd be Isaac Walshman. He's six foot four, 220 pound sophomore. Took that slider in the outside corner and drove it to left field, a laser of a of a line drive. He is a heck of a player to watch. The problem with that pitch, it had some snap to it, but it was exactly belt high. And Walshman belted it. Here's Schultz, the center fielder. Ball one upstairs. Schultz is two for eight in the series with one driven in. There have only been two RBI in the two games with a shutout and then a couple of runs scored by Xavier yesterday. Runner is on the move. The pitch is lined to right field. Picked up out there by Pearson, and now there are runners at first and third. Schultz with uh, Milam really pulled over near second base, steered it through the open spot. This definitely looks like a, it was a hit and run. And he did his job. It was a fastball out of the strike zone, down almost in towards the dirt. And he was able to just hit it on the ground the other way. And Xavier now at first and third and no outs, their best opportunity to take a lead uh, this weekend. Here's Dupre, the catcher. He's been the best hitter for Xavier. He's four for seven with a couple of those doubles and an RBI. So Hurd has to work around a hot spot here in the second inning. Erd going to that slider 85 miles an hour. Dupre chokes up off the end of the bat. He's around the bunt. Travinsky snares it. That was a heck of a backhanded grab by Hayden Travinsky. LSU blessed with three outstanding catchers. I mean, anybody. I mean, it's a shame you, it's not pro baseball where you couldn't trade one of them because LSU would get a lot of value for any of uh, Malazzo, Travinsky, Neal. I mean, they have a just a plethora of good good catchers. And each of them had a start this weekend. Two balls and a strike. That 94 mile an hour fastball missed. Cushing is on deck. The middle infielders are back. The corner infielders are even with the bag. The pitch, runner going from first base. Travinsky cannot come up throwing. And it's a stolen base for Schultz. Hurd really missing his location big time this, this inning. Another really nice pick. I mean, this ball is in the left-handed hitter's batter's box, and Travinsky just backhands it. First baseman is uh, first base is unoccupied now. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Hurd gets a much needed strikeout, his second of the game. Yeah, Dupre, they don't have captains, but he's really one of the team leaders. Dupre, Cushing, Waxman, those are some of the real big leaders for Xavier. And this was a giant strikeout for Hurd when he needed it most against the hottest musketeer hitter of the weekend. And he threw Lynn his best break in 86 mile an hour slider in a perfect location. Here's Cushing out of Naperville, Illinois. Ball one. Still work to be done for Hurd and teammates. The 1-0 pitch, a little bit off the plate. Luke Hammond is on deck. The inning started with a watchman single. 
Then a Schultz single through the right side with the runner on the move. Then a stolen base and a strikeout. There's a strike on the inner part of the plate. Two and one, one out, a pair of Musketeers in scoring position. That's lined into right field, and it is a foul ball by maybe a foot. Well, that was close. I mean, they say baseball is a game of inches, and that was it right there. I mean, what a difference, a f you know, 10, 12 inches make right there. Boy, it was four, five inches, I think, right of that foul line. If, it, if, if that ball lands, it's two nothing, and he's in, he's on second or third. See if Hurt goes back to that breaking ball. He tried to sneak a fastball by him, jammed him for a foul ball. Now he's got him set up for that good slider. The 2-2 pitch on the way. Popped up, foul ground. Jones over near and can't get it, and then is prevented from tumbling into the dugout by his teammates. So we will do it again on the 2-2 count. Call a buddy and tell them the game's on. It's the final game of this series. LSU has won the first two, one by shutout. The Tigers are 14 and one. Xavier seven and eight. The 2-2 pitch sweeps wide and will go to a full count. Heard from the belt. And the pitch in flight. Fouled away. And up and over the bleachers on the right side. This has been a good battle between Cushing and Hurd. Here we go at three balls, two strikes. That's a big breaking ball and just a number of a foul by Cushing. He was nearly fully deceived, but got a little piece of it. First base he is empty. A 3-2 count with runners at second and third. And one out. Swing and a miss. That is a huge strikeout for Hurd. Yeah, big pitch. You know, with the base open, they just stayed with the breaking ball, not afraid to walk him because the double play would be in order. And that time, that was an old-fashioned curveball, a little 12-6er. Started off at the belt in the strike zone and then ended up down at the uh, ankles. When you look at his career and look at the output of each of the teams yeah. on which he has coached. Yeah, Arizona went to the College World Series as the pitching coach. So did so did AM, so did our Oregon State. Hammond chases what looked like maybe an elevated breaking pitch. Let's put it like this. Yeski knows his way to uh Nebraska. Hammond is from Cincinnati, Ohio. Hitting just over 200, he slivers off a little piece. Luke is 0 for 6 in the series. Heard will get some vocal encouragement now. Can he come all the way back? With a pair of runners in scoring position. He does. It took three pitches. We are scoreless in the bottom of the second inning. Pearson was left at the plate when Milam was gunned down at third base after trying to advance on a loose ball at the plate. Let's get you a softball update. LSU and Kentucky in the fifth inning. 
are tied at two apiece. The Tigers went out in front 2 nothing, but they had surrendered a pair. And in the fifth, LSU and Kentucky tied at two as the Tigers look to remain the only unbeaten team in Division I softball. And Ronnie, I doubt there are any combinations across the country of a baseball team and a softball team at this point in the year with only one loss between them. Uh, that's probably true. LSU with a uh, big day yesterday, too. Men's basketball yep. picked up their ninth win of the season. They improved by seven games over last year in the SEC. That's pretty, pretty tremendous. Good stuff. There's ball four. Pearson is aboard. That's the first pass issued by Boyle. And it brings on Jared Jones. Jones has fallen off a little bit. He's hitting 280. A team leading five homers. He is second on the team with 15 driven in. Travinsky leads the club with 18 knocked home. The pitch chopped up the middle. Let's see if this gets through. There'll be one play at first base and well done by Cushing. They had him shifted over. Cushing was essentially behind second base and had to go to his left and made the play. But because of the positioning, Pearson was able to get to second on the fielder's choice. Jones changing it all up, going blue batting gloves, got the uh, the shades uh, on, hitting with that, trying to change it up offensively to get some mojo on his side. But well done by Xavier defensively. Now LSU's got two cracks at it with a runner in scoring position. And Larson is the hitter. He's first pitch swinging and lifts it on the infield. The shortstop battling the sun and Lambden makes the catch with Cushing next to him. So there's Lane prior to that at bat. And now time is called. So Jay Johnson wants to talk to three Tigers. Mac Bingham will be the hitter. Braswell is on deck. Two outs, a runner at second base. Speaking of that LSU softball team, Tuesday, Texas in a precursor of softball to come in the SEC, Texas and LSU at Tiger Park, 11 in the morning. Wow. Texas is number one in the country in the latest poll. And when is that, Tuesday? Tuesday at 11 in the morning. So the SEC some, Network will have it. So some, you got to play hooky from work a little bit and run, take an early lunch. It's worth it. Yeah. Extended lunch. That's over the head of Bingham and off the catcher's glove and advancing is Pearson. This one just slipped out of the hands in a big way. Tried to throw that cutter, it looked like, and that's a wild pitch. Went straight back to the bat backstop. And the 0-2. There it is the again. 1-0. It's 2-0. Yeah, he wants a new baseball. He's like, oh, this one's not working. And we're also going to have a conversation. The inning started when Pearson walked. He moved up on a ground out by Jones. Larson popped up, and now it's Bingham. Now the pitching coach Doug Willie is making the visit. Tell you a little bit about Doug Willie. He's from New Hampshire. Uh, ended up training season as the pitching coach. You're better than Wikipedia. Strike one, Cole. Bingham out of San Diego. A runner 90 feet away. We are scoreless. Chop left side, backhanded play by Lambden. Long throw. Yes, indeed. Well done by the shortstop, Jake Lambden. Not only did he get to it on the backhanded side, Matt McCormick is the team leader in hits and RBI. And Jake Lambden, who just made a terrific play at shortstop, is the first hitter. Thatcher Hurd had to walk hot coals 
Back in the second inning, there were runners at second and third, and he struck out the side. This ball is lifted on the left side, way up in the air, and comes down in the bleachers. The scramble is on. And there's a youngster, number one, with a new baseball. That's a nice, nice get. Just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Yep. His bleacher coach had him well positioned. <laughs> the pitch, swing and a miss. There was some heat there. There's a guy in the major leagues that's been doing that for years, going around the ballparks, catching home run balls, and he studies wow. the analytics and BP and all that, where guys hit, and knows how to position himself perfectly and has, like, wow. thousands of baseballs. Yeah. So he buys the cheapest seat and then roams? Yeah. They've done features on him. He travels all around the country, and... He's the master at getting foul balls and home run balls. Skip Bertman would have loved him to come here and turn <laughs> him back in in his day. The 2-2 pitch over the top, and that one eases outside. Let me tell you something. As a summer collegiate league team owner and know that the baseballs cost six seventy three dollars apiece, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I got to be honest, I, I have chased down a foul ball or two and maybe run past the 10 year old to get one. I'm not and I'm not really? afraid to admit it. Yeah. A chance for Pearson backing up, backing up, backing up and can't oh, get there. And now he the runs gate. through that gate down there. That's the main gate in the right field corner that connects the ballpark with the uh, training center. And that one kept carrying and Pearson never could get to it. Good thing it probably good thing it wasn't locked. Yeah. Right? I mean yeah. if it's locked he's going to have a little bit. It can be a lot of resistance down there. More of a collision but now he's got a hitch in his giddy up so he's trying to walk it off here. Hmm. He's thinking right now second base does not come with that hazard. The three two pitch. Steve right three call four in a row fanned by herd. This is at the bottom of the strike zone 95 mile an hour heat and uh, remember last inning he finished off the inning with a 96 er in the same spot this time around similar location you saw the Xavier dugout they kind of flinched a little bit they were hoping it would be uh, out of the zone, but it wasn't. Hendrickson struck out to open the game. Heard misses high. The wind is blowing left to right and basically in from left field. Here's the pitch. Sliced foul. There's a look at old glory. On this first day of daylight saving time. All those who would like to see this remain permanent daylight saving time. Raise your right hand. I've got both my hands raised if it makes a difference. Several states have okayed the one permanent time system, but it's, uh, it's going to take congressional action. Good luck. Yeah, Louisiana has, uh, has gone on record as saying uh, we, we want one time system. Let's take a look at these strikeouts. That's five in a row now, Ronnie, by strikes. Uh, he has been uh, on fire right now, commanding the fastball big time. That breaking ball misses up a little bit, and it's a uh, heat right down the dish. Another good slider. He's got him ahead 0-1-2. Oh, Wasn't his best slider, but uh, had just enough wiggle at the end of that hook to get the strikeout. Now we have Matt McCormick, and uh, there's the shift. With with Milam about a mile away from his normal second base position. Ouch! Yikes! That, that got Travinsky. Look look at Milam there. Uh, he is in. I mean, you need an eyeglass to see Milam out in shallow right field. <laughs> and Braswell is on the second base side, 
from his shortstop position and Tommy White is playing shortstop. The pitch. Ronnie, in the old days, and by that I mean just a few years ago, you would never see this shift in a non-conference game. That's true. But now with, with all the data, all the information, uh, you know, when you're able to scout other teams, you see every at-bat, you know all the positioning alignment. There are no secrets in baseball anymore. And it's all chopped up on video in just about any display you would like to call I for. I would love to see a hitter in this situation just try to bunt one Sure. Time or just try to hit it to third. You know what I mean? Like, it's – I would love to see a big guy go the other way. Well, he did beat the shift, did McCormick. Somehow he got it between Braswell and Milam. You know where he hit it? He hit this ball – right where Milam would be if he was playing normal. <laughs> I mean, this is this is a ground ball to second base, a hard one, but it's right to Milam at second base. Yeah, you're he right. He would have taken one step to his left, and it would have been right to him. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Now, of course, in the previous at bat, because of Milam's positioning, he took a base hit away. That's right. Here's Christensen who rolled out to the first baseman Jones last time. By the way, we talked about the softball engagement with Texas Tuesday morning at 11 in Baton Rouge at Tiger Park. LSU's baseball team will entertain North Dakota State at 6 o'clock Tuesday. And then a 1 p.m. game on Wednesday the 13th against North Dakota State. The pitch to Christensen. A burner over the edge. And up gap is getting even more obvious and obvious each and every day. Braswell at the bottom of the order is batting for the Tigers. I mean, look at it. Last year, LSU finishes third in the regular season, doesn't win the SEC ch tournament championship, and wins the national championship. And then the year before, Ole Miss, last team to get into the tournament, wins the national championship. That's all you need to know about what it's like to play in the SEC. And that uh, season starts next weekend when LSU travels to Mississippi State. Here's the second hit of the game for the Tigers. Fastball down and in. Braswell does a nice job of keeping his hands inside the baseball. A la Tommy White. We've seen him do that a lot over the last couple of seasons. He just good job of hitting it the other way. That's how you do it. That base hit by Braswell makes him three for seven in the series. Back to the top of the order we go for Monster Milam. He legged out an infield hit last time. Milam is four for nine this weekend. That's how you hit for a high average, Lynn. When Milam, when you get a hit when you're not supposed to. You know, last yeah. last yeah. time up, he wasn't supposed to, that wasn't supposed to be a hit. He was supposed to be out, but because of his speed and hustle just beats it out and steals a hit when you're not supposed to. That's when you'll get those extra average points. Here we go. Milam lifts one into left center field. This ball is carrying the left fielder and the center fielder collide. It's the left fielder who makes the catch. That is Hendrickson who made the catch and Schultz is down and just struggling to his feet after the collision. So obviously he is in a lot of discomfort and pain. This uh, lack of communication, the center fielder has priority. If he's calling for it, which it looked like he was, you could see his mouth moving, then it's supposed to be his baseball. You know, the left fielder has to get out of the way. And instead, they both were calling for it. Neither one gave. And that's a scary injury potentially out there. 
It is the center fielder on the gallop who collided with his teammate Hendrickson, the left fielder. Hendrickson made the catch somehow, and uh, Schultz went sprawling and has not yet returned to his feet. Sure, they're going to take him out of the game. And the question is just is this an, an injury that's going to knock him out of the game, or is this something uh, more serious that could be uh, a longer period of time? And you see, he's struggling just to put weight on it. Let's take one more look at the collision. This is Schultz on the receiving end of the contact. Watch the mouth of the center fielder. Mine, mine, mine. You can see him. And then the legs. Yeah. Looked like his right leg collided with the uh, with the leg of the left fielder. That was Hendrickson's and Hendrickson's OK. Interfield from left field. And Anderson has replaced him in left field. So Anderson goes to left field and Carter Hendrickson has moved from left field to center field. Meanwhile, the inning continues after the base hit by Braswell and the Milam fly ball out, which resulted in the injury to the center fielder Schultz. And it's Travinsky at the plate. Prey had to leap for that one. Yeah, they were thinking Braswell might be going because, you know, Travinsky's a guy who hit into a, ground, a, a double play. They caught Kling yesterday with Travinsky at the plate. Uh, picked him off when they tried to start the runner with Travinsky, so they were thinking they might do it again. That's a big bender, and Travinsky couldn't find it. Braswell over there, uh, the runner at first, you know, he's not a big base stealing machine. Even though he plays shortstop and he's a quick guy, you would think he would steal more bags. That's not really his M.O. Got one stolen base on the year, but LSU just in general doesn't steal a lot of bases. No. I mean, Kling mm -hmm. and, and Milam are the only ones that have four uh, stolen bases or more on the year. That's a fine job by Boyle of get ridding, getting rid of Travinsky for the second time. He was called out on strikes, and that time he strikes out swinging. I mean, Boyle is uh, the senior right. He is, is a talented pitcher. He has good stuff. I mean, we've seen 92s, 93s with the fastball. The cutter has been at 87, 90 mile an hour range, and so he's feeling it today. He's he's found himself in some jams, but he's been able to make some good pitches uh, with that cutter slider. Here's Brady Neal. He struck out in the first. Steve Reich one. Let's watch Braswell here. I have a feeling he might be moving, but he has shortened his lead, not going. And it's one and one. Braswell inching away, but still a moderate lead at most. Ooh, that was a missed opportunity right there by Braswell. If he gets a good secondary lead, reads ball in the dirt, he could have had second base there. Neal waits, swings and lines it to center field. Braswell stumbled a little bit as he approached second base, and he'll put on the brakes right there. All 
Right here, Neal takes a fastball that might have been a couple inches off the outside edge and able to line it up the middle. Braswell thought about going to third, sort of hesitant, uh, rounding the bag, and instead with two outs decided to play it safe. So let's play the what if game. And I know there are several options and several answers, and, and nothing is 100% right nor 100% wrong. But I, I like the theory of putting your guy in motion with two outs from first base because it generally is going to take two base hits to scoring from first. I think it's worth the risk of putting a potential base dealer at second where it takes one base hit to score in. Well, Jay Johnson has shown the ability. He likes to, you know, with his lineup, particularly at LSU, he likes to wait for the double or oh, the yeah. homer. I get the reason for it for sure. And when you have the firepower of Neal and White, you know, you kind of want to make sure they get a chance to swing it. I think that's kind of the thought. Well, we don't want to have Braswell thrown out trying to steal and not, and take the bat out of the hands of of Neal in that situation. Tommy White lays off the breaking pitch. Well, that's a, a project for your uh, your high school mathematics teacher. Figure out all the options. How many times you score trying to steal and then need one base hit or don't try to steal, don't get thrown out on the base paths, and you score using two base hits. Ooh, heck of a block. Put that one in your analytical book and <laughs> and ponder it for a while. Now the prey right there saved the, both runners being in scoring position. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is a. That's a major league block right there. I mean, that is cat quick. That's terrific. And he was able to get in front of it and not pluck it on the backhanded side, which is much more difficult. Three and one now. Let's see what White can do on the hitter's count. A strike, and we are full up. Two outs, two on, scoreless game, bottom of the third. Each team with three base hits. White waves at one. This ball's going to roll a long way to the right side. And oh. look at the recovery wow. by well, Dupre. I mean, that back-to-back -back big league play. Clouds in the sky today. Lots of sunshine. Temperature in the 60s. Expected to approach 70 this afternoon. Perhaps not get there, but real close. So, Len, I mean, no, you missed an opportunity to tell us. Uh, no, the 108 is right on time. But it, it could be the 1208 if it was. It should it be the 12 or the one? Because no, you're the one it, lobbying for. Is it you want it to move forward or back? I, I don't know where you are. I, the, I'm. I'm. If if you gave me the choice, I'd say stick on daylight saving time the whole year. But failing that, stick on normal time the whole yeah. year. As a golfer, I'd be a, whatever gives you the most sunlight. Sure. Yeah. There you go. Got to get that back nine in before the sun goes down. This is a true story. When the when this uh, daylight saving time first took effect back in the 70s, actually it wasn't the first time. They did it during the war as well. But um, I'm working, you know, minimum wage radio station, small town Natchitoches radio station, and a woman called a couple of days after the uh, incurrence of daylight saving time and was complaining loudly that the extra hour of sunlight was burning up her flowers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's when you know you've got a good life and then you, that's all you've got to worry about. Oh, huh? yeah, yeah. Washman pops this one up and out of play. By the way, the train is still moving. It's a pretty, good, pretty lengthy one, the 108 right on time. The old Alex Box Stadium, which closed in 2008. There's, there's the train. The train would be right behind the press box. Oh, where, yeah. Where we would sit. I mean, you could literally, I don't know, 30 yards, 20 yards behind us, you know, was the train. I mean, it was. Well, the ground would shake. Yeah. There's a liner that beats the shift into left center field, and this is going to roll a while. Watchman pulls up at second base, and that's the first extra base hit of the game. Well, he's had a, he's had a good day. He's had uh, a couple of hits, and both of them were hit very hard. That's a fastball that uh, Hurd missed his location. He went it down and away, left it kind of above the belt right down the middle. 
And Waxman, who's one of the team leaders, uh, gets Xavier started with a runner at second and no outs. He's also the reigning Big East player of the week. He has singled and doubled. And the Musketeers have out hit LSU now, four to three. Milam is retreating. Pearson is coming on. It is the right fielder's ball, and Pearson's go. got it. That's how you communicate. Milam wanted it, probably could have caught it, but because he's he's got to give way to the outfield, they have priority at the last minute. He peeled off and avoided contact. And you see Milam, he's calling it. I want it, I got it, I got it, but Pearson says no, it's mine, and you see Milam throw on the brakes and get out of the way. Hurd had to work around a hot spot in the second. And the Musketeers have put their leadoff batter aboard on a solid double to left center field to open the fourth. After the fly ball to right, it's Dupre. Dupre is from Sun. Prairie, Wisconsin. Heard struck him out. The first of five consecutive strikeouts over the course of two innings. Back in the second frame after Watchman and Schultz had both single. Now today in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, it's 41 Burr. and sunny. I'll tell you what, this could be Sun Prairie Baton Rouge today. It's a, this is a Chamber of Commerce day. Ooh, did that get him? They're going to say that clipped the helmet. That's an 0-2 pitch by Hurd. He was trying to throw the fastball up out of the zone to get to pray to chase, but instead it gets away from him. Let's see where it gets him. Let's listen to this. I think it skips off the mask. Watch. Yeah, you can see the helmet move. It glazed the little flap, the helmet flap, and then uh, went right into Dravinsky's glove. So for the second time in three innings, Xavier has runners at first and second. Cushing struck out back in the second inning in this same situation. I tell you, talk about your life flash before your eyes when a 94 mile an hour fastball is literally headed towards your eyes. Bingham retreating quickly, turns and makes the catch on the dirt in deep left center field. Mac Bingham, whose duty has mostly been in left field this year. Was able to track that one down. A very well hit ball by Cushing, but Bingham was equal to the task. Yeah, that ball was smoked, and uh, the wind's actually pushing it a little bit away from Bingham. He did a really nice job of going and getting that ball. You know, he played center field at Arizona. Now, this year, he has split some time out there with Kling and others, but you can see he is more than capable defensively. So, Hurd. Trying to wiggle out of a another very dangerous spot has one out to get. And Luke Hammond is waiting. Heard struck him out in the second inning as well. Heard checks the base runners and delivers. And he got him on a breaking pitch. It's not a tremendous break to it, but the speed is about eight miles an hour slower than a fastball, but it looks exactly like a fastball out of the hand, so the timing is off of the hitter, and it is just enough sliver on it to fool him. The Tigers may get out of this. Pearson locates it in right. He squeezes it. 
And once again, BC and Coastal Carolina. And you're looking at a guy named Jay Johnson in the LSU dugout who is relentless at pursuing talent in the offseason from anywhere and everywhere. Now, Jay Johnson said that, you know, part of why he scheduled um, uh, why he scheduled Xavier is because he knew their RPI and stuff would be high and they're going to have, you know, be a good RPI team. And he wanted to schedule a team like that leading into SEC play. They were somewhere around 30 RPI heading into the weekend. Pearson hits it to the right side. And it's gloved by Cushing as he moves to his left, and there's the first out. Well, let's get you updated uh, from Kentucky. LSU softball has moved out in front with six runs in the sixth inning. And so what was a 2-2 game in the sixth is now an 8-2 ball game in the bottom of the sixth as LSU needs six outs and has uh, a six-run cushion against Kentucky as it tries for the sweep to remain unbeaten, the only unbeaten Division I team in college softball this year. Yeah, we will keep you posted on the Tigers on the softball field in Kentucky. The stadium right here, Alex Box Stadium, Lynn. Uh, LSU will host North Dakota State, the Bison, on Tuesday right. night. And then Wednesday, a little businessman special. Uh, they'll start early, I think, what, 1 o'clock? Yeah, I it believe, is 1. Uh -huh. On Wednesday. But then on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the Savannah Bananas come to town. And they're going to take over this ballpark. And uh, Banana Ball will be, in effect, the hottest ticket in sports right now. How about this? The Savannah Bananas, this past weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, played three games at Minute Maid. In Houston, sold out every game over 40,000. First time they've ever played in a major league ballpark. And with two outs in the second inning, they had a guest pitcher last night. Roger Clemens came in oh, wow. and threw, uh, threw an out. Who Roger lives in the Houston area. Saw him and visited with him last weekend uh, uh, when LSU and Texas were playing in, at Minute Maid. Name dropper. Might have sang karaoke with him last Saturday night. I don't hey, know. There, there could be some video. Is there out any there. video for that? There is. There is. The Rockets a huge karaoke or we might be brothers from another mother. I, I didn't know this until uh, recently. Well, Ben McDonald told me he was offered to throw out a pitch or two when they but he, he, he declined. He said he just wasn't up to it. Didn't feel like getting hurt. How far will this travel? Whew. Way, 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 way back. And it's off the top of the wall. Digging for third. And making it easily, a triple for Jared Jones. And he hit that ball as far as you can and still remain in the ballpark. And guess who's the team leader in triples? I know, that's just crazy. Jared Jones, two triples on the year. I would have lost that over under bet before the season. Now he kind of thinks it's gone, but because the wind is blowing in from center field directly in, it keeps us in the ballpark. But Jones still, even though he was kind of just watching it out of the box, was able to still make a triple. That ball was hit 405 feet and bounced off the wall out of the reach of Hendrickson, who had moved over to center field from left field a couple of innings ago. And Jared Jones is 90 feet away with one out. Here's Larson. Contact is needed here. Larson grounded to short, or rather popped up to the shortstop last time. Ashton Larson, who was recommended by Alex Lang, the former LSU pitcher, uh, first round pick. Alex Lang. Uh, Works out in the same area, same facility as as Larson, and said you should head down to Baton Rouge. LSU for the first time today is trying to do something with runners in scoring position. The Tigers are 0 for 3. They've not had a lot of opportunities. 
but they've got one here. Larson will take a little walk after missing with that swing. Two balls, two strikes, one out, a runner at third. No score, bottom of the fourth. Final game of the series between Xavier and LSU in this, the first time they've ever played before today. And Larson goes down on strikes. Boy, that is a big pitch. Yes, it is. You know, talking with uh, Doug Willie, the, the pitching coach for Xavier before the game, he said the key to his success is going to be that cutter, and that's what it is. You see right there, 87 mile an hour cut fastball. Think Mariano Rivera. That's that was his pitch that he threw 90 percent of the time. Well, Willie has had the feel of it today, and that has been his go-to when needed. Now it's Bingham at the plate. Not a lot of teams have an eight-hole hitter of this caliber. Let's see if he can deliver. He is first pitch swinging. The ball is dropped by the second baseman. Safe at first. Safe at first after the bobble by Cushing. And the Tigers, if this play stands, will have a 1 0 lead. And Xavier showing no indication of asking for any sort of review yet. This is a good pitch. Jam shot should just be a routine ground ball in the second baseman. But the bobble and the good hustle uh, by the veteran Mac Bingham, you know, he was not, you know, frustrated and just jogging down the line. Bingham was on his horse, and the, uh, the bobble by Cushing allowed LSU to get a much needed run here and take and, the lead. And it was clearly that hustle which enabled Bingham to just beat the throw after the bobble. So here's Braswell, who had a single last time. Tigers are the first to change the scoreboard. Bingham is two for four on stolen bases this season. A one out triple by Jones off the center field wall and a two out error have provided LSU with a run. One ball, one strike, two outs. Bingham at first base, a three-step lead. The pitch, check swing, and he went around. Here we go with a 1 2 count. Instead, the peg to first base. Bingham again, only a three step lead, not going anywhere. And this is lined foul slicing into the first deck of bleachers. And the Easter egg hunt is on. Yep. 673 a ball right there. So they went to go get it. That's with the stamp of the sponsor on your baseball. 670. Mm. Tax, shipping, everything. Man. You know, that's less than uh, that's less than a softball in the SEC. They go for nine bucks a piece. Yeah, I mean it's a lot bigger. I mean that makes sense, you know. Last summer, I'm not proud, but last summer, I, I, I got to admit, I was at a, a Baton Rouge Rougarou game. I walk outside, there's a foul ball, and two kids come running by me, and they go, which way did it go? And I go that way, left. And of oh course, gosh. it went to the right. Oh, God. <laughs> I set him, I set him chasing to the wrong way to go get the baseball. I mean, it just. There's something about it. You couldn't give up that 673. Well, you, I mean, look who's talking. Could you imagine you reaching in your pocket and giving some. 673 three dozen times a game to someone <laughs> you wouldn't do that. No, no, I couldn't. No, 
No, I, I couldn't. But but I would yield the baseball. <laughs> I, I would I would not deceive two kids. It just depends on whether or not the baseball can be used again or not, right? Is it a lot True. of mud on it? Is it scuffed? If it is, then by all means have it have after it. Braswell goes down on strikes, but the Tigers have shown some good poise today. Remember last year, he was really big for LSU over the last three, four weeks of the season after having a few struggles uh, through about the first two-thirds of the year, but uh, had so much experience down the stretch that Jay Johnson's hoping that that'll pay him dividends this season. His postseason performances were quite honestly necessary yep. for the Tigers to win the national championship and you could say that about four or five players some of whom are not on this roster this year and have moved on but some who are and some people came from a place that was not all that effective at times during last year to just be superlative and enablers on that run to the championship, and that's what it takes. You know, last year LSU had its, you know, outside of obviously the first couple starters, uh, they, they had their struggles and they had their question marks. Who's going to be the third starter? Who's going to be the go-to guys in the bullpen? And that was, those were questions that really weren't answered until the end of the season. But uh, and while the offense was just so dominant, and carried them. This year, it's the complete opposite. It's the the pitching staff. Much has been made about them one through twenty as being potentially the deepest and most talented pitching staff LSU's ever had, while the offense has got to figure out the lineup and get back to uh, to being a somewhat like last year. And so the pitching staff's going to carry the offense right now, where last year was the other way around. LSU has made a defensive change in center field. Paxton Kling has replaced Mac Bingham. So it's Kling in center field now. Lambden struck out in the third inning and he draws a base on balls in the fifth and that is the first walk from Hurd today so that is Bingham in left field I think they moved Bingham over to left yep and then that Pearson still in right so Pearson in right cling in center and Bingham has moved back to left field Larson is out and Kling will hit for Larson. One strike on Hendrickson at the top of the order. He's fanned twice. Now it's one and one. was a good job by Lambden to reach base as the leadoff as Xavier tries to answer LSU's one run get that leadoff guy on you got a much better chance of of scoring and it's the third inning in which Xavier has done that they did it in the second they did it in the fourth and they've done it in the fifth Ooh, that was a close one Nate Ackenhausen is warming up down in the LSU bullpen, but Hurd's plenty, plenty fine. This one just misses. That was pitch number 75 for Hurd. So he is fine with his pitch count, but it does look like this could probably be his last inning. There'll only be one play. It's at first base. The throw is low as Hurd ditched it in front of Jones, and it bounced off Jones's chest, it appeared. He was unable to pluck it at first base, and the Tigers miss fire and put themselves in jeopardy. Now, watch Hurd right here. He does he look at second? It, I thought I thought maybe his shoulder was open, but yeah, he just flat out threw that ball straight into the ground. I thought his body language. There was a little bit of a, a thought of maybe turning the second first, maybe going there, but then he didn't quite close up and. 
Threw it right into the ground. Now will Jay Johnson make a move right here because he's got a lefty at the plate, one of the better hitters in McCormick, uh, who's arguably six to separate. Here's McCormick. He's been a solid hitter today. First pitch swinging. McCormick's one of those guys, Ronnie, you mentioned on Friday that does not wear the batting gloves. And that's old, a rarity. Old school. Well, the baseball batting, uh, the bat grips are a lot different than they used to be. It's not just tape. It's, it's real sticky stuff, so you don't really need it as much. That's going to reset the 22nd clock. Like how Jay Johnson's leaving Thatcher Hurd in this ball game to work through it. See if he can't get him through five innings. Heard from the belt with two aboard. That bounces and gets away from Travinsky. And Xavier once again is threatening. That's a wild pitch to produce 90 feet for both runners. Yeah, this is a spiked fastball. You don't see that very often, a fastball that just is thrown straight into the ground. But Heard right now is uh, trying to right the ship in the middle of this at bat. The 2 1 pitch with the shift on again. Fouled straight back. White is in fairly normal position at third base. The other infielders are on the right side. And Milam, especially, is in shallow right field. Christensen is on deck. Nobody out. That's high. Three balls, two strikes to a good hitter. He struck him out. Boy, he snapped off a big breaking ball in a much needed spot. Full count, he walks him, he's probably out of the game. That time right there gets a big bender. Wow. That's a question mark shaped curveball. That is a really good hitter, too. Probably yes. sitting fastball, anticipating the fastball, and got the hook. There is still work to be done. Ball one to Christensen. Hayden has bounced out to Jones at first base and Heard fanned him in the third. The 1-0 pitch. Fouled away. Christensen out of Spring Grove, Illinois. And we'll have an offensive conference. Billy O'Connor stealing a page out of Jay Johnson's book with the uh, offensive conference in the middle of an at bat. Probably telling him, hey, make sure you swing at strikes. Hurts uh, been out of the zone a little bit. Xavier's helped him mm -hmm. by, by being a very free swinging club. Their approach needs to be to make sure they funnel that they, they funnel the baseball over the white part of the plate. The one one pitch. Breaking ball hit to the right side. Milam's got it to run scores. We're brand new. As Christensen was able to hit it, hit it solidly to the right side. And the four three put out allows. Lambden to score from third. That is the right approach. Anticipating the breaking ball, stick your nose and front shoulder right towards the baseball and hit it the other way. And he, he, he laced that ball and got the job done. Nice play by Milam as well. That was not easy. He made it look that way. 
One run, four hits, and one error for both teams. Travinsky is back. Does he have room? No, that's up on the roof. Little James Taylor reference right there, up on the roof. Yeah. Good song. Who else sang it? I mean, that's that's been done by lots of folks. Before James Taylor, I think. I'm going to defer to you, though, for sure. And you're giving me that you don't know what you're talking about. Bro. So I'll accept that. I think I saw Roger Clemens do it karaoke oh, yeah, last yeah, Saturday yeah, yeah. night. When very, we good, were very, very good. Very, very good. No, Ro Roger's more of an old rocker type. Good, he likes good. a lot of journey. Loves Toby Keith. That was his guy. Yeah. He spoke at Toby Keith's uh, funeral a few weeks back. Look at the year Washman's having. Over 400, well over it. So errors have proven to be part of the yep. innings in which both of these teams have scored. LSU in the fourth and Xavier here in the fifth. Yeah, Xavier had to bobble at second base and then LSU uh, heard spike the ball into the ground. You ever heard bunch. of the drifters? Yep, absolutely. Well, they sang it first. Okay. I told you. A called third strike. Watchman who airport waiting room, whatever. We are so glad you have chosen to spend some time with us. Showed that graphic early about the SEC tournament 21st to 26th in Hoover. You know, next year, 25, it's going to be a totally different SEC tournament. How far will this ball travel? It is caught at the wall. Monster almost had a monster mash, but that ball was caught at the wall by Watchman. And it was stung as it got there in a hurry. That ball hit well, and Milam, even his outs are loud right now. Look at this one. Right against the H and E sign in right field. Well played by Watchman. Lots of like about that young man. Six foot four outfielder, one of the leading hitters, and then that gets Travinsky. That's the second hit batter today. For LSU. Yep, White was plunked in the first inning. Gets him on the bicep. Same spot White was hit earlier. So White doesn't have all that padding that Travinsky's got on that elbow. Here we go with Brady Neal, who struck out and singled his first pitch swinging. And the right fielder drifting to his left is able to grab it. Watchman has been busy out there this inning, and he's caught a couple of well hit balls. Well, this brings on Tommy White. White is one. For nine in the series, he has been plunked and struck out today. The pitch tight to White. That sweeps the other way, 2-0. and oh. Good eye that time by Tommy White. Again, has himself in a hitter's count, 2-0. Oh. Can be very selective here. And look, fastball all the way. That's a good pitch. White was wise to stay away from that. He's got a couple of more chances. Give credit to Boyle for finding the low and away strike zone. A very short lead for Travinsky. I mean, really short. Now, that's about as short as you can get right there. <laughs> it's on the bag, right? There's no chance Travinsky's stealing, by the way. Now, 
There's a one two and a half. Tiny step lead. That's. Did it get a piece? No. Ball four. He's ball four on his way to first base. And that's kind of a strategic walk for Boyle, if you will, although it does put the runner Trevinsky in scoring position. But they did not want to allow White to get a full swing against a fat pitch over the plate. And that's going to happen, you know, uh, if, if White decides to be super patient this year, he's going to have a ton of walks, as teams would much prefer to take their chances with whoever's hitting behind them. There's a strike to Pearson. Josh has walked and grounded out. And there is a right hander. Warming up for Xavier that's Jonathan Kelly. LSU a winner over Kentucky eight to three the final. Six runs in the sixth. Proved to be the difference maker for the Tigers. They broke open a 2 2 game. So LSU sweeps Kentucky in the opening weekend of SEC softball and remains the only unbeaten Division I team in the country. This ball is going to leave the yard, but it is foul. Just a little too much turn on the swing by Pearson. Yeah, it was definitely a home run off the bat. The question was fair foul and made its way into the uh, kid zone down there. Pearson waits. And another nice block by Dupre. Boy, he's had a workout behind the dish. He's been very good defensively. Well, she hasn't challenged his arm, but I tell you what, he has done a heck of a job keeping balls in front and has definitely kept at least one run off the board. The 2 2 offering in flight. Swing and a miss. That might be what you'd like to see early on in the season. That's tight to Anderson. So Ackenhausen, he um, on Wednesday threw arguably the best inning. In LSU baseball history, hear me out. Ten pitches. You got my attention now. Struck out all three batters in the ninth right. inning to get the save at on the road at Southeastern. Right. After LSU had the three-one come from behind victory after they were down two. Right. It's four-three. Goes out there in the mound, strikes out all three on ten pitches. I mean, he had one ball. I, in that moment, for what it meant in a save situation, can't, it's, there's never been a better one. As far as one inning. Three punch outs, ten pitches to get the save. In the Could have got him out on three pitches. I mean, there's there's been a, immaculate innings in the history of LSU oh, baseball, yeah. but not with not with that much on the line. It's, you know, so I, I he was sensational. He was indeed, indeed he was. He's in another very tight situation here. With a 1 1 ball game in the sixth. Aiden Anderson is making his second at bat. Came on defensively and came to the plate in the fourth inning. He fly to right. He's up there swinging. Wide stance at the plate. And he is able to reach with a very patient at bat. You know, sometimes you. You are walked. Sometimes you're issued a walk. Sometimes you earn a walk, and that was the case for him. 
Very good at bat in a big spot because, you know, as we've said many, many times, that not all, the leadoff batter walking is different than when you get a hit or an error. That leadoff walk is going to come around the score more times than not, especially in a pressure situation. Well, it did last inning, in fact, in the fifth. And they've put their leadoff batter uh -oh. aboard there now for three consecutive innings, and we've got a misfire at first base. So LSU... Not at its sharpest shell self today. Let's see if it was the throw or the catch. Mackenhausen picks off, and the throw is wide, but Jones yeah. has to catch that one. I mean, that hit off his glove. It wasn't that far out. But officially, it's an E1, the second throwing error by a pitcher today. And this uh, Xavier team now has a runner at sc in scoring position with nobody out. So that's the last three innings. Xavier has put their leadoff batter aboard, and four out of the uh, four out of the previous five. The pitch bunted. Ackenhausen picks it oh, up. Oh, what a play! And makes a strong throw with Milam covering. The sacrifice is successful. The Tigers. We're fortunate to get an out on that. Well, well done what, by Ackenhausen. And the big 256-pounder, I mean, he, he shows some quickness right here, turning those hips right here. Bam! Gets rid of it fast and fires an accurate throw. I did not think Ackenhausen would be able to get to the ball and turn around that quickly. That was well done. But now he works with a runner at third and one out. Cushing has struck out and lined to center field. Yeah, look at Ackenhausen's glove right there. He's got a duck. That's all you, Lynn. You're a duck hunter. Got, I like that. He's got a duck embroidered on his Marucci glove. Now, guys get customized their gloves. They'll put their name on their gloves. They'll use, a lot of them have the state flag of whatever state they're from on their glove. I have not seen a pitcher. He's got the state flag on the backside, but I haven't seen a pitcher with the, uh, the duck right on the Marucci logo. That's pretty good. Got the green and brown and gold colors we had two choices brown or black yeah, that was yeah. It. we got our gloves that's it there was no you couldn't put a name on it you couldn't put a number nothing you want a green glove i mean a brown glove or a black glove that's it the o2 pitch upstairs so let's call it the Nate Quack Attack. <laughs> Nate Quackenhausen, that'd be another no, one. No, Nate Quack Attack. Oh, Quack Attack, you like that one. What kind of duck is it? That's a, you would know that. The pitch. That's wide and we go from 0-2 to 2-2. Two and two. LSU with that infield in looking for the ground ball to go home. Quite the battle here between Cushing and Ackenhausen. There's an 85 mile an hour slider that he fouled off. One in the fourth unearned for the Tigers, one in the fifth unearned for Xavier. Ackenhausen, who was so big in Omaha last year with uh, so those innings out of the pen. Well, he did for the Tigers in his relief role last year what, uh, what Hurd did for the Tigers as a starter at the end of the season. That's the flexibility that LSU has with this lineup with the depth on the mound is people like Ackenhausen. They can give you spot starts. They can throw long relief. They can close when needed. He's so versatile. And had it not been for number 30 last year, as was the case with so many other clutch performing Tigers, there would not be another national championship banner here at the ballpark. Ackenhausen, who transferred from Eastern Oklahoma State Community College. I remember um, Joe Sherman, the head coach at Delgado, played against Eastern Oklahoma State a couple of years in a row in regionals, and he raved about Ackenhausen. I remember him saying, 
Boy, LSU's really getting a good one, and his scouting report was accurate. The 2 2 pitch. No swing. Take a look here. Did he go or not? Nope. Did not go. A runner at third. It's Anderson. Line drive smacked up the middle. And a base hit and an RBI. And Xavier takes the lead. Boy, what an at-bat. Cushing. The senior just uh, kept hanging around, fouling balls off, and then Ackenhausen made a mistake, hung an off-speed pitch up around the letters, and Cushing made him pay for it. And to the point you made earlier, Ronnie Rance, walks to open an inning often are lethal. That's been the case the last two innings. A walk to Lambden in the fifth. Milam spins, gets it to the shortstop. But the throw is low from Braswell, and Jones was unable to make the sweeping backhanded pickup. That's not going to be an error, but that's a double play that should have been completed. Well, Braswell was a little late getting to the bag at second. And then as a shortstop, you have a couple of options. You can either plant your feet, turn and throw, or sort of run through the ball. And he was you could see he was off balance, sort of out of whack a little bit with the throw. Sort of threw across his body a little more than he would have liked and uh, could have had a double play. But again, to your point, the walk to Lambden to yeah. open the fifth and then the walk to Schultz, or excuse me, Anderson, to open the sixth, and both of those have crossed the dish. It's really incredible how that statistic plays out more times than not. It really does. It goes to the fact that it, you don't see very often in baseball uh, in a big inning where teams get, you know, more than a couple of hits. Right. So you make it easier on the offense if you throw in some free passes, especially the, the first one to get the party started. Because if a team's going to get two hits, that's first and third, but you throw in a walk, well, that's how a run scores and maybe even two. That's a strike much needed. Two runs five hits and one error for Xavier one run four hits and a couple of costly errors for the Tigers. Here we go with the one two lifted into very shallow center field cling is coming on and cling calls off the two middle infielders. Jared Jones leads it off he banged a triple off the center field wall last time and he's backed away with the first pitch from Nick Boyle. So Ronnie with that run in the fifth and sixth Xavier for the first time in this series over the course of two and a half games has a lead on the Tigers. Four nothing was the final on Friday eight to two yesterday and now two to one Xavier on top on the scoreboard for the first time. Lambden cannot make the play. And Xavier joins the error party. Well, let's see if LSU can take advantage of the uh, mistake here by Xavier. It's a it's a very good pitch. That's just not handled by Jake Lambden. 
What a performance so far by Nick Boyle, who's had his best outing of the year. He's gone five innings, only given up one run so far to LSU. And um, this is the, the pitching coach that's headed out there, Doug Willie, to have a word. And he's actually going to make the change. That's a rare one. You don't usually see the pitching coach making a move to the bullpen. Usually it's the head coach, but they're going to, they've already made the call. Their best go to guys out of the pen. Jones takes a short lead from first base after reaching on the shortstop's error. And the pitch to Kling, his first at bat today, is wide Ashton Larson was replaced by King an inning or so ago Larson was over two with a strikeout Kling is over four on the series There's that natural breaking ball from that arm slot, yeah. but it sweeps wide. It acts as a changeup as well. I mean, 74 miles an hour. You've got to just be real patient on that Frisbee slider. Kling is able to get out of the way. Three balls and a strike. The Tigers trail by a run. We're in the sixth. This is getaway day for Xavier, and they'd love to leave with one win in this series. The pitch tight, cling as a board. That actually hit him. Hit by pitch officially. And LSU has its first two aboard. So Jones takes his position from second base, and Kling is behind him. There's a left-hander throwing in the bullpen, but he just got up. Who has had its first two runners aboard. Nobody out. Jones at second base. Kling on first. And here is Bingham. Let's see if he is sacrificing. He's around a bunt. Let's it pass. The first rule of bunting, right? Bunt strikes. Absolutely. Two and zero oh from Jonathan Kelly. Good eye, good take by Bingham. And now the left-hander is working much harder and faster in the bullpen. That is Alex Vera. And here we go with a 3 0 count. That's down Nicholson Drive. That was the old bunt take. Now we'll see if he uh, gives him the real bunt, 3-1. The bunt is down, the spin, the throw to third, out at third base. Jones looked like he kind of got hung up in the dirt down there when he attempted his slide. And out on a close play at third, a 1-5 put out. The sacrifice is not successful. Yeah, Jones didn't get the best jump. And he, you can see he's out. That's a, you know, when it's a force situation, as the runner at second base has to get a tremendous secondary lead. It's got to really push the envelope and get a giant lead at second base and be going as soon as you see downward angle. And uh, Jones just didn't get the best jump. And so what the Tigers also didn't do was take advantage of a 3-0 count on Bingham as he was trying to bunt, and they eventually get the force out at third. 
Oh, here's Braswell, who has singled and struck out. There's more lead speed, though, right now on the base pass with Kling at second base and Bingham behind him. Yeah, I mean, a base hit to the outfield, Kling will definitely score. He's one of the fastest Tigers. Braswell takes a strike from the side slinger, Jonathan Kelly. It's been a quiet day offensively for the Tigers. And it's been sloppy defensively. Yeah, only four hits. They've been out hit by Xavier through five plus innings. The pitch. That sweeps wide. Two balls, two strikes. LSU today is 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. They've left six on base. This is going to twist off and land near the bullpen in foul ground. You know, Ronnie, right now these teams are combined 0 for 13 with runners in scoring position. So Xavier, nothing out of six. LSU, nothing out of seven. The pitch and a big one coming. 2 2. He struck him out. How about that? That was the first time we've seen the over the top yep. angle from Jonathan Kelly. He's been submarine, submarine, and then now he goes with a, a curveball over the top. It wasn't a good one. It was actually a ball out of the zone, but it just kind of surprised Graswell. So the error and the hit batter, and then a force at third and a strikeout. Two gone for Milam. Milam hit a line drive to the right field wall last time that was caught by Watchman. And he takes a strike on the inner part of the plate. He had an infield hit in the first. He flied to left field in the third. He lined out to the right fielder last time. This is the monster that LSU wants at the plate. A monster, uh, you know, Milam really did a nice job on that first take. Called it and go his way. He didn't show any emotion. Seems locked in right here. He's hitting 404. And he falls behind a ball and two strikes. That's the one spot that I've seen him. Uh, he's got a good, does a good job of. Swinging at strikes, but if anything, he gets a little aggressive up in the zone. We have seen him swing at some balls up in his letters, eyes, uh, and at some at bats this year. He does a really good job down and out. Doesn't go after balls out of the zone in those spots. Two balls, two strikes. Can Milam come through for the Tigers? He hits it hard to center field, and it is caught by the retreating Hendrickson. Well, Milo effective with runners in scoring position, but it's a one-run game, and here is Carter Hendrickson. A strike from Ackenhausen. Thatcher Hurd started. He went five innings, allowed four hits, one unearned run. He walked only one and struck out nine. This is going to be a difficult play picked up by Ackenhausen and the underhanded throw is not in time. Hendrickson bunts his way aboard and guess what? That's the fourth consecutive inning that the Musketeers have occupied first base with nobody out. That is a fantastic bunt, especially uh, 
when you have a left-handed pitcher on the mound, you know they're going to fall off towards third base. So if you can push that bunt towards first, that's exactly what you want. Hit number six for Xavier. That's a late swing by McCormick. This is a dangerous hitter. He's one for three. He's lined out, singled, and struck out. Kling is on the move, and he gets there. Paxton Kling covered more ground than pine pollen and got to that ball on the run near the warning track in right center, a left center field, and this crowd is aware of the superb catch by Kling. Boy, a big double play for LSU. That's just remarkable. McCormick hits this ball really well. I mean, he is a heck of a hitter, and Kling runs it down no problem. Hendrickson, not aware of where it was, found himself uh, at second base and was doubled up easily. You've got to, as a runner on base, when that ball's hit in the air, you got to locate it. you got to find it. 8-4-3 on the putout. Cling to Milam to Jones. Kling almost makes plays like that look routine, and they are so very far from that. He plays with a great deal of confidence in center field. I mean, LSU has so many options. Uh, we've seen Jake Brown play a little center. We've seen Bingham play, obviously can play center, has for a couple of years. Kling is, might have the most speed of any of the uh, LSU outfielders and can cover the most ground, but they are... Well suited out there. Question becomes, who's just going to swing it? You know, who's yep. going to swing the bat enough? I mean, at the end of the day, LSU, all of LSU's outfitters can play defense. It's who are the, give me the three that can swing it the most. That's what Jay Johnson's looking for. That got in on the hands of Christensen. He's 0 for 3 with an RBI. Tommy White ranges to his left, fires it into the chest of Jones, and the inning is over. Up out of a couple of hot spots with several strikeouts. Hayden Travinsky will bat first for LSU. He'll be followed by Brady Neal and Tommy White. Does that combo sound like production? We will see. Travinsky is played with the shift on the left side. The sweeper is wide. This is playable. The right fielder has plenty of time to get under this towering fly ball. And Watchman grabs it for out number one. Time up, Brady Neal hit a ball hard to the outfield and right. See if he can get the party started for LSU, but uh, they're doing it against Jonathan Kelly, one of the better relievers for Xavier. He's uh, Kelly on the mound already has two saves on the year, so of the seven wins, he's already got two of the saves. And has been uh, on the mound for years. There's an over-the-top look. 
That's a tough on hitters, Lynn, when you you know you kind of – Oh, yeah. Because when you face a submarine or pitcher or a sidearm guy, you got to change your eye angle to a completely different part of the body. You're trying to pick the ball up out of the hand. So you're looking down, you're looking down, and all of a sudden he comes traditional over the top, and that's – that can be a little tricky. It's very rare that pitchers have the ability to throw from all the different arm slots, but uh, it's impressive that Kelly can do it at a high level. Brady Neal has struck out, singled, and flied to right. The outfield is playing him very deep. And that Both was a bit of an off-speed pitch. Yeah, it took about 10 miles an hour off that offer and just literally pulled the string. And you can tell by the body language, Jonathan Kelly's feeling it. Look at that. Change up, tumble away about two inches off the outside corner, kneel out in front as well. And most of those other pitches to a left-handed batter from a right-handed side wheeler will be breaking into them. But that one dropped and faded away on the uh, off-speed pitch. Well done by Kelly. LSU has been swimming against the tide today the entire game offensively. The outfield remains deep. Anything hit over the outfielders' heads is probably going to leave the ballpark. Yeah, they are super deep. They're trying to keep a gapper, perhaps, from becoming a double. And Tommy White missed that one. He got a pitch to hit. You know, very rarely is he going to see a fastball down the middle of the plate because most teams are going to throw sweepers and change-ups and breaking balls off the plate, make them chase, and that time he got one and fouled it off. Jonathan Kelly to the plate. It's high. White has been hit by a pitch. He has struck out and walked. Two outs, nobody on base. White hits one the other way, and that finds the gap against the shift. So White has been on base three times now. That's his first base hit, his second hit of the series. And the inning is extended for Josh Pearson. Pitch up in the zone. White, who can inside out a ball as well as anybody, did exactly what you said, Lynn. That second baseman was kind of playing over towards the, the bag and took advantage of that gap and that hole in the right side. This weekend than they were yeah. coming into this weekend. They had a team ERA over seven. Opponents were batting over 300 against Xavier pitching, but this weekend they have uh, stepped up their game and have been much tougher on LSU than I think they expected. Vera has allowed 10 hits in seven and two thirds innings. He's going lefty on lefty here and works in a big breaker for a strike on the first pitch, and now the count is level. White has a minuscule lead at first base. And that breaking ball spins away a good take by Pearson. Nick Boyle went five strong innings as the starter. Jonathan Kelly, an inning and two thirds in relief with one hit allowed and a couple of strikeouts. And now Alex Vera. So White is only a step, literally no more than a step away from the bag. Why would you throw there? It seems like uh, risk reward, right? It's not worth the risk of a bad throw. Well, it's impossible to pick him off. 
This one is lifted into right field. Watchman has a plenty of time to locate it and makes the grab. And Vera comes on to get Pierce. Uh, comes back to uh, Xavier. Xavier, a preseason uh, number two mm -hmm. pick in the Big East. Pearson giving ground, finds it on the warning track and takes it in deep right center field off the bat of Isaac Watchman. They definitely seem uh, like their pitching staff is starting to glue a little bit. And, and as far as Xavier is concerned, right. uh, they, they came in a little discombobulated, but they seem to be finding their roles. Probably right hander stepping to the plate. They wanted to come with a right handed pitcher and. Tigers will start to mill around too down the pen just in case. You know, one guy we have not seen for LSU is Justin Lohr. Right. Lohr, who uh, was a Xavier Musketeer last year and had a fantastic season. The transfer is down in the LSU bullpen, and I see him uh, standing around. We'll see if he gets the opportunity today. He's got a ball in his glove, but uh, standing behind the pitcher's mound. That breaking ball doesn't bite. Jake Hooker is warming up in the other bullpen. Yidri misses high and away. There you see Hooker. He's one of their best, too. He's a 92 95 right hander guy. They have three real studs in their bullpen, Vera, Hooker, and Kelly. And we've seen Kelly and Vera. And I guess we'll probably see Hooker before it's all said and done. Kling is not going to have to move much, maybe a step. He was perfectly placed. Anderson flies to Kling for the second out. And this brings on the catcher, Matthew Dupre, who has struck out, been hit by a pitch, and has a sacrifice bunt. Strike one. Coming up in the eighth for the Tigers, it'll be Jones uh, and Kling and Bingham. And that's bounced through cleanly on the left side. A two out single by Dupre. That's his first hit of the game. LSU now has been out hit by Xavier. That's the seventh safety for the Musketeers. And that pitch up in the zone and Dupre who who's had quite the weekend. That's uh, his fifth hit of the weekend. Took advantage of that mistake. He was four for seven coming into the game Dupre. And one for two now. And playing some very good defense. Yes, indeed. Catching blocking balls. The one strike pitch to Cushing, who has struck out, lined out, and singled in a run. His RBI base hit came in the sixth inning. And that right now is the game winning run for Xavier. Pending six more outs for the Tigers. Xavier has definitely shown some grit here today. You know, they their their staff talks about they follow the uh, the lead of Billy O'Connor, who's sort of that. Uh, Never give up. Gritty ball player when he played. Gritty coach. They have a lot of fight in them. And, and they and talking with the staff, they said, hey, "Look, these players take on the persona of their coach right there." And we're seeing that today. Gidry works ahead. A ball, two strikes, two outs. A runner at first base.
Braswell slings it over. Jones is waiting. The inning is over. So Gidry, 95 mile an hour from Indiana, 6 290 pounder. He's got a three earned run average this year. 0 and 2 through nine innings, giving up nine hits, has struck out seven, has walked four. And opponents are batting 257 against Jake Hooker. They have three guys in the back end of their bullpen that at the moment they feel are the three best and have a lot of confidence, and Hooker is one of them. And he is a first year musketeer. Yep, true freshman. So let's see if LSU can find some good swings against Jake Hooker. Kelly and Vera were effective in relief over the course of two innings. And now it's Hooker's turn in the eighth. Ball one wide to Jared Jones. Two runs, seven hits, two errors for Xavier. One run, five hits, two errors for the Tigers. Two and oh to Jones. Jared has grounded out, tripled off the center field wall, and reached on an error. He has scored the only run for LSU. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss on a bender with uh, a bit less velocity as well. Real good 2-0 pitch because yep. Jones was pressing the action. He was looking for something to drive. Now we go to 2-2. Two -two. And Jones looks a little perplexed. Yeah, he, uh, again, just trying too hard to make something happen. I mean, that ball was way out of the strike zone. He goes around on a three-quarter swing, and after falling behind 2-0, and oh, he strikes out on the next three pitches. So Hooker throwing the hooks. That's just off the plate. Yeah, I mean, that's a... Jared Jones is going to see a steady diet of that. Um, you know, the, the, that's the scouting report on him, and that's kind of what put him with limited at-bats the last half of the year last season when, when Coach uh, Johnson kind of settled in on some veteran hitters and won the national championship, and that's the adjustment he's got to make is he knows that the breaking ball is coming. I mean, that, that's all that he's going to see 90% of the time in the SEC play, which starts this weekend. Kling after two pitches as a 1-1 count. LSU is down to its last five outs, trailing 2-1. Kling was hit by a pitch earlier. This is only his second at bat. He came in defensively a few innings ago. The 1-2 grounded to the right side. Cushing is in front of it, and there are two outs. Cushing to McCormick for the 4-3 put out. Now that cutter slider by Hooker is what he's throwing pretty much exclusively. And uh, this is an impressive first two batters he's faced. You know, for a freshman on the road in Alex Box Stadium, late in the game with a lead, you know, the nerves that we've seen a lot of good pitchers get eaten up by the nerves in the moment in, in years past, but he is uh, not showing any of that shakiness here today. And we've got a pinch hitter. Ruddle is going to bat for Bingham. He's out of Monroe. He went to Neville High School. Zeb Ruddle. Ruddle a 250 batter, one for four in the season. He does have a couple of RBI and one double. Sit LSU today, Ronnie, has never been able to reach any kind of continuity, any kind of consistency at the plate. They've had some chances, not as many as they normally would, but they have just not been able to get a timely hit to crack this ball game. 
This is Jay Johnson trying to get as many lefties up at the plate as possible to face the uh, the right-handers. So Ruddle hanging out over there, only four at bats on the year. Does have a walk as well, one for four with a walk. All of a sudden, hey, grab a bat, you're in there. In a crucial spot. The Tigers have left 10 on base, and they have failed to deliver with those men on base. That's a good take by Ruddle. That's a close pitch. Three balls, two strikes. Pressure on the freshman hooker. The same on the pinch hitter Ruddle. And he goes down swinging. That one was two LSU one. Ruddle stays in the game in left field for the Tigers. He batted for the left previous. Uh, Let's see, that was, he batted for Bingham. And he stays in left field. Luke Hammond at the plate. Gavin Guidry on the mound. We play in the ninth. Two runs, seven hits, two errors for Xavier. One run, five hits, two errors for the Tigers. Pearson takes a few steps. And grabs the soft liner off the bat of Luke Hammond, who's now 0 for 4. Well, important LSU holds Xavier right here because the way they have struggled offensively, they got a chance down one, but down two, that might be a, a little too much. The way LSU has kind of gone quiet offensively, uh, really going back to the second inning. Uh, you know, late in the game yesterday, they had three zeros on the board yesterday. And it's had a slow start today. And we've got a pinch hitter. This is Connor Mish. Let's check some other scores for you quickly. In the bottom of the seventh, Tennessee and Illinois tied at three. Georgia in the sixth leads Northern Colorado eight to one. Kentucky in the eighth has a four to one lead over Kennesaw State. Florida eight nothing over St. Mary's. That's in the seventh. Longwood and South Carolina, a lot of runs scored early. It's in the fourth inning, six apiece. Mississippi State, five to three over Evansville in the fourth. Texas A&M in the fourth inning leads Rhode Island three to nothing. Vanderbilt three, Illinois State nothing. That's in the fourth. Auburn five to two over Austin P. That's in the third. And a few more, Alabama 5-3 over Lipscomb in the fourth. Arkansas 4-1 four over McNeese in the fourth. Missouri 12-0 early over Purdue-Fort Wayne. That's in the third inning. And Ole Miss has a 3-0 lead over Moorhead State in the bottom of the third in Oxford. And you are up to date in the SEC. Nothing doing there. Gidry takes care of business with the strikeout. Connor Mish right here not seeing the ball very well. The pinch hitter, the sophomore out of Indiana. Swung and missed at a good breaking ball that time. Now back to Hendrickson at the top of the order. He has struck out twice, has a sacrifice, bunt, and also bunted for a base hit. Yeah, last time up he had that push bunt single but then he got doubled up on the great catch by Kling in the left center field gap. Very nicely done. Braswell on the short hop. It's the shortstop for Xavier. And LSU will have a pinch hitter. It's Jake Brown. He got and hit the right on is top hit. the foot. He's hit by a pitch. That, and that's a good start for the Tigers. They get a man on. That is exactly what LSU needed was to get that leadoff man on and via a walk or hit batter is probably even better than a base hit. And the sulfur hide tornado. Sure he would have liked to have been able to swing the bat but he did his job. So the Tigers have their leadoff man aboard. The infield at double play depth. The crowd coming to life. Chop right side. Takes a big hop for the second baseman. He turns. 
He writes himself and he gets the out at first. But Jake Brown is able to advance on the Stephen Milam ground out. He sort of did his job, right? He got the runner to second base because I was wondering, uh, was there a chance they might bunt him? But uh, credit Xavier, they had their second baseman play perfectly. They they shifted over Cushing way into the hole, and uh, he made a nice play. By the way, a quick update from the Women's SEC Basketball Championship. It's halftime. South Carolina 36, shorthanded LSU 32, a four-point lead for South Carolina. Oh, they had the runner hung up between second and third had they wished to go that way. Yeah. But the new shortstop, Grant Stevenson, does get the out of Trevinsky at first base. Stevenson, the senior, went for the sure thing, but he had a chance to to get it out right here right right here he has Brown hung up oh easily and that would have been a big out for LSU because that would have taken a runner out of scoring position instead they still have a chance to tie this game the tying run 90 feet away and Brady Neal represents the last hope for the Tigers he's first pitch swinging and he cannot find it that was a 92 mile an hour fastball well placed uh, maybe even a couple inches off the outside corner Jake Hooker looking to nail down the victory the first in the series by Xavier and it would be the first win over LSU ever by a Xavier baseball team two quick strikes on Brady Neal and Hooker the youngster pitching very confidently can the Tigers scratch across something here? The pitch. Swing and a miss. This game is over. Jake Hooker comes out of the bullpen and does his job.